Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to talk about anger and disability. Disability and chronic illness, I guess. Um, I did talk about this a little bit in another video um, where I had an incident on Twitter where I posted something and um, I got basically swarmed by a lot of um, chronically ill disabled people um, that were pretty upset about what I had posted. And it wasn't anything offensive. Um, it was just, you know, I think I had mentioned something about how people should not um, self-diagnose. And I, I mean, just the, the fury that came at me from that. Um, I, I got called every name in the book. I think I was called a racist, which was really bizarre because I didn't think there was anything racist about the, the comment. Uh, I was called a liar. Um, I was told that I was accusing chronically ill people of things that they weren't doing. I had no idea what I was talking about. Um, and which is bizarre because I was kind of referencing my, the, the communities that I'm in, I guess, the, you know, that pertain specifically to my chronic illness. And I was being told that my experience was wrong, that the things that I was experiencing within that community were wrong or they weren't real or I don't know. It, it was just really strange. Um, and that, that actually brought something, um, to the surface for me, something that I've, I've always seen within the chronic illness community. Um, and I'm going to be specific to chronic illness community. I don't like to use disability, um, as a whole, because I know that there are a lot of disabled people out there that have different experiences than chronically ill people. Um, but, um, one of the things that, I've always noticed within chronic illness communities is a lot of anger. Um, and I have talked about, I, there was another video I did probably a few months back where I talked about how I don't like going to support groups <laughs> because it's just, I mean, it's just a lot of weird stuff in support groups. Um, a support groups specifically for chronic medical issues like Lyme disease or that kind of thing. Um, I also try to stay out of the Facebook groups for that as well because again, it's, it's very similar. Um, there's a lot of sadness, but there's also a lot of anger and a lot of rage. And that's something that I see is very, very pervasive in chronic illness communities. And it's one of the big reasons why I stay away. Um, I feel like there's even some people that, that, you know, on social media that seem to make their entire account and their entire experience um, of chronic illness about their outrage over all of the different aspects of their condition or, or the, their limitations, things like that. It makes sense to me though. It makes absolute sense because we are, um, those of us who became chronically ill. So I, I kind of, um, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I'm not, I'm also kind of new to chronic illness in a way. Um, so I don't know if there are, I mean, I'm sure there are people that are born with chronic conditions, but I do think there is a difference um, between people that are born with it and people that acquire chronic illnesses throughout their lives. People who were formerly healthy and able-bodied that became unhealthy and unable to do everything they used to do. And it's very normal to experience anger um, when that happens. And we all do. We all experience sadness, anger, I think all the, the stages of grief. Um, but I have noticed that there are some people that get stuck in that anger. And there are people that get caught there. And, you know, chronically ill people seem to be one of the biggest, most hostile groups on the internet. Next to, you know, uh, you know... They're, they're, they're second only to probably Trump supporters and vegans on the internet because I, I, I just could not, I did not foresee the level of anger and animosity and rage over something that wasn't really targeting anybody. Um, 
but I think the reason for this, there are, there are a couple of reasons for this. One reason is obviously you're uncomfortable, you're in pain, you're sick every day, you, you, you feel horrible day in and day out. And that's enough to make anybody angry. And I get that. Um, and so the, the anger is, is expected. And I, and I understand it. I understand where a lot of these people are coming from. Um, the other reason I think there's a lot of anger um, is because a lot of people feel that they can get away with it. And this is what this is kind of what I mean, because I know this is probably not going to sit well with a lot of people. There is sort of this halo effect when we think of, let's say, priests, when we think of vegans, right? There's this halo effect of, you know, vegans care about animals and they care about the environment, right? Priests are holy people. Um, they're closer to God. They're messengers of God, this kind of thing. And we see a lot of these these groups committing atrocities. You know, we, we, we know the things that they've done and we know how horrible they can be. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times I've been harassed by vegans on the Internet um, and called just horrible names. Worse than what I've been called by, by you know, disabled people or, or chronically ill people. But they have this sort of halo effect around them. And I think disability and chronic illness has a similar um, a similar effect, not so much a halo effect, but sort of a victim. Um, uh, uh, I don't want to say, I don't know if victim is the right word, but you're a martyr. There we go. Martyr, the sort of martyr, martyrdom. I'm suffering every day. I don't feel well. I, I can't do the things I used to do. You know, I, I'm just a shadow of a human being right now, you know, compared to what I used to be. So I get to be horrible to other people. And I think that is one of the big driving factors in this outrage, you know, that, that we, you know, we sometimes aim at other people. And this is not just something that I've experienced on the internet, on social media. I've experienced this in real life. I actually, I remember I made a phone call cause I was looking for a support group in my area. And I saw that there was one listed at my local hospital. And so I called the organizer of that support group. And, um, she, I think I told her my last name. And, um, for those of you that don't know, I used to be married after I got divorced. I wasn't able to change my last name back. My ex-husband is Middle Eastern and she, I, I told her my name, my last name or something. And she goes, is that Middle Eastern? And she said something like, oh, I'm so sorry for you. Or I'm, I'm so sorry about that. I don't know what her, her background was. As far as I know, she was a white lady or I don't know. I, I forgot what her name was. And I was on the phone and literally the entire phone call. I mean, first, that's how she started the conversation. <laughs> that's racist. I mean, um, and then she, she knew who my doctor was. And she started saying disparaging things about my doctor, almost like telling me that my doctor was basically just trying to take my money um, or that my doctor was paying her her bills or her expensive home with with her with my cash or something, something to that degree. And I was, you know, I was very patient with her because she was hard of hearing um, and she was sick just like I was or she was more sick. I don't know. And when I got off of that call, I was like, did this lady just say a bunch of racist things to me? Like it was, it was really weird, but because she was sick, I had to be sympathetic and I had to be kind and I had to be patient. And looking back on that now, I should have hung up the phone after the first racist comment. But that's what I talk about when I say this martyrdom or this martyr effect when it comes to chronically ill people. And a lot of times we feel like we have a right to scream and yell at people, to attack our doctors, to be hostile to other sick people because we believe we have it worse or we believe that we're suffering more than, than they do. And I talk about this in, I have a video I think that's, a, that's called Chronic Illness Narcissism. And I talk about that a lot, that as a sick person, we do believe that we're the center of the universe. Um, I've seen people that I, that, you know, seemed to be okay. And as they got sicker and sicker, as they, you know, 
they got deeper into the the chronic illness, you know, identity, they become that thing. They become this sort of mean, nasty person or someone that's always looking for a fight or someone that's always looking for how they're being um, attacked by someone else. And it was really bizarre because, you know, I posted this thing on Twitter and yes, a lot of the people that responded were chronically ill. They had, you know, some pretty, you know, scary diagnoses and they had gone through the worst, you know, they had gone through it, you know, for, for many years and and they were still suffering. But then there were people at the bottom, you know, some of the extra comments on the bottom of people that I was like, I don't think this person is even chronically ill and they're calling me a, a, a bigot, you know, out here, you know, it's, it's really bizarre because it seems to be a bandwagon that some people just start jumping onto. And, you know, I, I think it's very, very important for those of us who are chronically ill and who are suffering. And, and yes, I know there are people that are suffering way more than I am that are in a lot more pain than I'm in and that have a, a much less patience than I do. And I can't imagine, I can't imagine what that's like. And I, I, I don't want to be in that situation. I mean, my situation is bad enough. I don't want it to get worse. But one thing that I've learned is that being sick doesn't, doesn't exempt you from being, um, it, it does not excuse bad behavior or bullying behavior or nastiness. Um, and I think a lot of people do believe that, much like some priests think that they can do whatever they want because they're holy people and no one would ever suspect them of doing horrible things, right? And it's this, it's very it's similar dynamic when it comes to being a sick person. You're chronically ill and you, you know, no one will ever believe that you're a horrible person. How can I be horrible, right? I'm on oxygen all day. I'm stuck to an IV all day. There's no way that I could possibly possibly be abusive or racist or, you know, and I've, I've seen it. I've experienced it myself, you know, online and in person. And that's a big reason why I do avoid chronic illness communities or support groups because there's always one. Usually there's more than one, but there's always at least one in the group that, um, that believes that they just can behave however they want or treat other people however they please because they believe that they are the most suffered person (laughs) on the planet. Um, and I'm not saying, you know, oh, somebody's got it worse than you and your, your condition is not valid. Your condition and your pain is absolutely valid. Your treatment of other people or your mistreatment of other people is not valid. And your your illness does not excuse that. Um, And I think it's very, very important that those of us that are sick learn to rein it in. um, Because we can become those angry, bitter, unhappy, sick people very, very easily. Um, And there there are a lot of them out there. Um, so I'm going to repeat this. I've said this many, many times. Make sure you have a therapist, some kind of mental health counselor, um, somebody one-on-one that can listen to you and just you and just your complaints and your pain, because I feel like support groups just are not the place for that. Um, we, we go to support groups to see if we can find empathy, but I hate to say it. Empathy is is in very, very short supply in chronic illness circles um, and, and disability circles. I, I have never met a group of less empathetic people, to be quite honest. Um, and I think we kind of need to get rid of that halo effect, right? This martyr effect that I'm going to go to this support group and everybody's going to gonna identify with me and sympathize with me because you are definitely not going to get that. I, I've gone twice. Both times was kind of a bust. Um, and like I said, I called this other lady because I was looking for a different group. And she was just awful. Um, and, you know, I've, I've gone online. I've tried to form community with disabled people and, and chronically ill people online. And it's just another um, another mess. And that's why I think having a therapist 
just for you can be very, very helpful. And yeah, it might take a while to find one, um, but I would, I would definitely invest as much time as, as possible for that. Um, so that's what I've got for you today. It is really, um, it was very disheartening to see that people within my own community could just be so vicious. Um, when I don't think I said anything, uh, incredibly offensive, but, um, I, I do think I understand where they're coming from and I understand the anger and, and the, the sort of that pain that we all have. Um, but anyways, uh, I hope you like this video. If you have any comments, um, please leave them below, like, and subscribe, and I will see you again soon. Take care.